In this tutorial, we're going to examine how to do the no spin push and the no spin chop. When we play, often we focus on how much spin we can get on the ball with our serving and pushing and top spin. But the no spin ball can also be really effective. Once you have developed a lot of spin with your shots, then if you can develop the no spin shots as a deception, it becomes very tricky for your opponent to see what type of spin is actually on the ball. Let's have a look at the different effects of the different types of spin. If I put a lot of spin on the ball, so that's heavy backspin, the ball is going to drop straight down off Jeff's bat. What he needs to do is tilt his racket back to counteract the backspin. And now the ball comes back on the table. So if I do a no spin and Jeff has the bat tilted backwards, you'll see the ball now goes up really high and makes it an easy ball for me to attack. Therefore, the key is the changing between the heavy spin and the no spin and making those strokes look as similar as possible to make it deceptive for your opponent. If they can tell easily what type of spin I'm putting on the ball, then it's easy for them to adjust their stroke. But if the strokes look the same and I'm varying between backspin and no spin, then it becomes difficult for my opponent. So the first thing you can do is think about the contact point on your racket. For more spin, you're going to get the contact a little bit closer to the leading edge of your racket. Okay. There or even there for more spin. For less spin, you're going to get the contact closer to your hand or closer to the handle because that part of the racket is moving slower than this part of the racket during the stroke. So here, I'm going to get more spin. Here, I'm going to get less spin. The other thing you can do is on the contact, just push your hand through slightly forward to execute the no spin. So for the back spin, you're letting your wrist do the work and brushing underneath. For the no spin, you're just pushing forward slightly on contact. So you're getting a flatter contact and executing that no spin ball. Some ways you can do this is also by limiting the action of your wrist. So for the heavy spin, you're using more wrist. For the no spin, you're using less wrist. So more wrist, less wrist. The principles for the no spin chop are exactly the same. Thinking about the contact point and also thinking about the contact coming a little bit more forward for the no spin. Ah. Oh. So if you don't adjust for that no spin ball, your top spin is going to fly off the end of the table. So that's heavy, I need to lift it, that's no spin. I really need to come over the top of that ball to keep it down on the table. Still, you've got to generate some good top spin to go over the top of it. Now the key is that we need to make these strokes look the same. With the push, we want to try and make the backspin push and the no spin push look the same. Now, the keys that we talked about were the contact and also then pushing it forward. So the action needs to be very subtle to get that contact point with backspin or no spin. And also when you're pushing that hand through, it can't be a very obvious pushing action forward. It needs to be just on the contact, push it forward, and then make the rest of the stroke look the same. So the start of the stroke and the end of the stroke look the same, but it's the contact where you're changing to push it forward slightly and get that no spin generated. Let's firstly take a look at the use of the wrist. Firstly with backspin, using your wrist, and now let's look at the no spin, using less wrist. 
So more risk, less risk. More risk, less risk. More and less. More spin. So that one is close to the end of my racket. Now the no spin, and that one was closer to the handle. So more spin near the end, less spin near the handle. Now let's look at the chop. So that's heavy spin, that contact was right near the edge of my racket. And utilising a lot of wrist. And now no spin, less wrist, and the contact is right in the middle of my racket. One heavy, one no spin. The no spin ball can be very effective. When used in conjunction with the backspin ball, you can really add some deception to your game and create some good opportunities for yourself to attack that next ball. So remember, to generate more spin, you want more wrist, the contact down near the leading edge of your racket. For less spin, you want less wrist and contact closer to the handle. <laughs>